to highlight or not to highlight? That is never the question. It's always yes, highlight. Hello and welcome to Jade Reviews. I'm Jade and I'm going to be reviewing. I am wearing the sparkliest shirt that I own. In fact, I think it's the only sparkly shirt that I own, but it was necessary today because the subject matter of the review that I'm offering is explosively radiant, glittery, shimmery, beautifulness, much like how I see myself. All right, what we're gonna do first though, just as we're starting out here, we're gonna look up how to pronounce this brand because we're not having another last video. Nikki Tutorials herself has confirmed that it is Ofra, which I was pretty sure that's what it was, but I'm sure about a lot of things and I'm often wrong. Today I will be reviewing Ofra Cosmetics Pillow Talk Highlighter. I kind of just want to start by saying that I don't know anything about makeup. Not a damn thing. I don't know how to pick the right makeup for my skin tone and complexion. I don't know how to put makeup onto my face itself, like the fundamental basics of applicating. Applicating? Using the tools to put the makeup on my skin is something that I don't know how to do either. And you might be thinking, you're clearly wearing makeup right now. We can see it. We can tell that there's some things happening that are probably not your normal skin. And you would be correct. I am wearing makeup. So clearly I know how to get makeup to be on my face. But by no means would I say that I am very good at it. And I'll just get in here for a second. Just get like really close together and you can just like take a look at what I'm talking about. There is technically makeup on me, but like what's happening to my eyeshadow? I don't know. Is it blended well? Is it in the right positions? Is the pink that I chose for no reason? Does it even work with my skin? Does it bring out my eyes? All questions that I don't know the answer to despite how many videos about makeup and makeup tutorials that I've seen. None of it seems to make a lasting impact on my brain. So I've basically given up trying to learn proper techniques for makeup application and I just do whatever feels right. Like it's not even blended, you know what I mean? I stuck a couple colors on there and was like, good enough. I wanted to offer that preface because as I move forward with this review, I wanted to just clarify that we're not talking about the specific way that it is applied and demonstrated on my skin because I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not the best at putting makeup on. And I just needed you to know that before I start talking about this seriously amazing highlighter because anything that you're watching and you're like, ah, Jane, I don't think that looks quite right. I assure you it's not the highlighter's fault. It's all here. This is the general problem area. Something about you makes me feel like a dangerously highlighted woman. Ariana, let me know if you want to collab. This is not going to be a video, a video, a video. It is going to be a video. You didn't let me finish my sentence. <sighs> This is not going to be a video tutorial or showing you how to use it. This is just going to be however many minutes of me talking about how friggin' awesome Ofra cosmetics are in general and specifically how just out of this world their highlighters are. I stumbled across Ofra when I was doing some research into vegan cruelty-free brands to try out. There are basically three points of makeup purchasing that were important to me for it to be vegan, cruelty-free, and clean. I had found this brand specifically listed in a Reddit thread of someone asking for highlighter recommendations on, I think I want to say our vegan beauty maybe. So I didn't find this all on my own. This came recommended by some Reddit user. Ofra is both certified with PETA and Leaping Bunny as cruelty free, which if you don't know anything about cruelty free certifications, Leaping Bunny is one of the highest leading standards that you can be certified for because Leaping Bunny's certification process is much more rigorous and they actually do evaluations, screenings to make sure that the companies that are certified with them are actually meeting the correct standards and not just kind of saying that they are. To determine for me if makeup is clean enough to meet my standards, I usually just use the Environmental Working Group's Skin Deep database. If you have never checked that out, it is super awesome. They have so many 
many products on there. You can just type in the name of what you're looking for and it'll pop up with their score on their unique rating system that they use, as well as a list of all of the ingredients and information about the environmental impact, skin allergies, stuff like that, use restrictions of all of the ingredients. And the score itself that they get takes all of the ingredients in a product into account. And I don't know exactly what the system is for doing that. Um, I don't work there. <laughs> And most, if not all, of the Ofra highlighters have a 2 on EWG, which is a great rating. So that's just a little background on things that I look for when I'm makeup shopping, which I feel like are your basic points. You know, you've got your Reddit recommendations, and then you've got your four to six weeks of reading about product cruelty-free certifications and ingredients, and then you're ready to purchase, you know? <laughs> That's casual. I went with the shade Pillow Talk specifically because it was one that came recommended a lot of times. It seemed to be like a crowd favorite. And since I was just kind of dipping my toes into the world of nicer makeup than I was wearing before, I wanted to go with something that seemed universally appealing to people. I can't just rush into highlighting my face, all right? That's a lot of pressure. I mentioned I don't know what I'm doing, right? Obviously my palette itself is is well used. I've had this for quite some time now. I think about a year at this point. So obviously you can see where I've used it and it's worn down. It's not as pretty as when it arrives, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how shimmery this is. And I know shimmer highlighters are not what everyone gravitates towards or wants, but I really like the sparkle. <laughs> the sparkle calls me. See the light where the shimmer meets my skin. It calls me. No one knows how shiny I can go. We should actually find out. We should just start getting this on here, you know? Okay, so I am already wearing this. You maybe could tell that there's some shimmer going on. If you could just like ignore the circles under my eyes, that would be appreciated. I told you I don't know what I'm doing with makeup, so I do my best to cover those up, but that's just part of my body and the way that it looks, and I'm not really that upset about it. But also don't stare. On the topic of not knowing what I'm doing with makeup, I understand that they make highlighting brushes, right? And I have one that's one of those fan brushes from all the tutorials that I've watched. I understand that a fan brush is commonly used to put on highlighter, but I don't know, it doesn't seem as fun. Despite the very fun shape to this, there's something that's a little too gentle for me and using this for the application of my highlighter. I really want something that <laughs> tickles. I really want something that when I approach my skin with the highlighter, I know, my skin knows, that it's about to go down, you know? So I actually use this brush from Real Techniques that I think came in like a set of brushes that I got and I didn't know what to do with it <laughs> until I just picked it up one day and I was like, let me just see what I think of this and what I thought was, oh yeah, this is the experience that I was looking for. So you can see it's like, I don't know, just like a floofy brush, a floofy brush, floofy. <laughs> can you get drunk off highlighter? And technically, the brush itself says that it is a setting brush. Yeah, and I don't know what that means. I don't know what they want me to set with this. Like I do after I put on my concealer and foundation, I follow it up with a loose powder that I use like my full powder brush to set my makeup. I think that's what I'm doing, what I'm doing that, I'm pretty sure. So when I got this one in whatever kit that it came out of and it was like setting brush, I don't know, I had a bit of an existential crisis. What have I been doing this whole time? But I also, this was so small. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure real techniques? I'm supposed to use this for some sort of setting of my makeup? I have repurposed this into my highlighter brush. So that is what this setting brush is setting. It's setting the gleam that goes on my cheeks and keeps me personally happy all day long. I don't really know what it does for other people. I suspect it's possible that other people see my makeup and are like, okay. <laughs> From here on out, we're just gonna try our best and hope things do not go off the rails. They could go off the rails a little bit. I have a really cool highlighter, what do I care? 
on value. So I will throw out there that Ofra cosmetics run a little bit more expensive. They are definitely not the same as buying like e.l.f., which are also cruelty-free and vegan, or any other drugstore brand. I kind of wanted to treat myself. I wanted to, I don't know, kind of splurge a little on myself. I think we should all splurge on ourselves in some ways. It doesn't have to be monetarily. It could be painting yourself a really nice painting, you know? It's just for you. It's not for anybody else. This is going in my bedroom. Get your own. Have your own splurge time and get your own painting. But I will say that Ofra Cosmetics are a little bit pricier, but they really are amazing. I got this on a sale that Ofra was having on their website, so I kind of lucked out because I think I probably got this and a couple other things for like half price. But normally their highlighters retail for around $35 for a 10 gram palette. But something else that I really loved about this that kind of amps up the value for me is that it has these refillable go godets go days go Google it yourself because I don't know how to pronounce it. But the pans that come in their palettes, most of them, at least I know for sure the ones that are made like this, and then they offer refills called that go word that I'm not actually sure how to say it or even what it means. Like I can gather it from context clues, but that is not a word I've ever seen before outside of the context of Ofra's website. I'm not accusing them of making up words, just to clarify. Again, I will reiterate right here, this is the problem area. You can go buy refills of the pans themselves so that you don't have to keep buying the package that the makeup is stored in, which is, I think, such an amazing option. It makes me happy to know I'm kind of reducing a little bit of the plastic that I'm consuming. None of their products ship like plastic-free or sustainably that I am aware of, but it makes me feel good to know that once I need to replace this, I can just buy the pan itself, which will decrease some of the plastic that I'm using and I don't have to keep buying the plastic case that the makeup is stored in. And something else about the value of this is the case itself is really nice. Like, I know you're not going to be able to feel it because this is a YouTube video, but the quality is so nice. It feels so sturdy. It does not feel like cheap plastic like you might get if you were buying like a Wet n Wild cheap eyeshadow palette or something. This is like serious, sturdy construction. It has a very nice mirror, not the kind of mirror that it's like, am I looking at my reflection in a potato? Would definitely give that a 5 out of 5 on value. I would give the whole thing a 5 out of 5 on value. Did I clarify that? What does it matter? This is barely a review channel. And the thing is, from what I've seen kind of watching Ofra's website, is that they do often offer some sort of discount deal or like a BOGO offer. So it is totally possible to grab yourself a highlighter for under $35 if you just kind of watch and you're not in any rush and you play your cards right. I mean, what even is my lipstick doing? I don't know how to put that on at all. Like, I'm pretty sure this, like, side of my lip is up higher than that side, and I don't think that's because of the way my lip is shaped. I'm pretty sure that was all application. User error. What was I talking about? On quality. Quality, again, for me, gets a 5 out of 5. I am incredibly amazed by how smooth and, like, buttery this goes on to my skin. As someone who is not very good at doing makeup, I really feel like I don't have to be to wear this, which is amazing. Prior to this, I was using an e.l.f. highlighter, but this is honestly a lot better quality than my e.l.f. highlighter was, at least for me. Maybe some people who know how to do makeup can put other drugstore brand highlighters on and make them just, like, pop, but that is not my skill level. That's not where I'm at in my journey, and I probably won't ever be there. So I super think this deserves the 5 out of 5 on quality because the formula is just so, so nice, and the fact that it also gets a good rating on Environmental Working Group so I don't have to feel bad about it touching my skin or the world blows my mind. It's on the back of my hand here. I mean, truly, you can just see the way that catches the light. One of the things about the quality of this that I really like, aside from how smooth and buttery it applies to my skin, is that while it is really shimmery, really shiny, as you could obviously see, it's not like glittery, if that makes sense. Like, I've had highlighters in the past that they're shimmery highlighter, 
didn't really give me the glow that I wanted. It just kind of looked like glitter on my face, which is not what I'm going for. But I really think Ofra does an amazing job with their highlighters of it just like glowing. You just glow. And in some ways, yes, this was expensive. But like I said, I got this, I believe exactly half price is what I paid for this. So it is half of 35. Oh no, why did you say that out loud? Now people are going to be waiting for you to do the math. Oh. Okay. $17.50? Is that right? We're gonna go with it. $17.50 is half of $35. I'm not gonna think about it too hard because that's not what I'm here to do. Thinking too hard is absolutely not permitted on this channel. Don't test me, I will unsubscribe from you. Me. Even though I did pay half price for this, if I need to, when the time comes, replace this and I'm just really not seeing any sales or any deals, I would absolutely pay full price for this. I would pay the $35 because one, it's a 10 gram pan of makeup, which I think is great value for the quantity because at least for me personally, the way that I wear makeup and do my makeup, I don't do it every single day. I do it most days, but there's some days that if I'm not going anywhere or I'm just not in the mood, I just won't do my makeup. So for me, this lasts a long time. I have had this for at least over a year. On the back, it does have like the expiration date information, the recommended months to keep this before throwing it out or changing it or whatever, which I understand is like kind of an important thing, right? I'm sure if there's any like dermatologists watching or people who actually know makeup, they would probably probably say, yeah, you should follow the expiration dates on your makeup. Don't tell them, but I don't. And this still works beautifully and perfectly. It's not that expired, I don't think. I say we're fine. And also it just still works really well. And I will use makeup until it's either so dried up and crusty that there's no way to apply it to myself or until I drop it and it breaks. And then I'm like, well, I guess I'm getting a new one, which thankfully I don't do very often. I'm used to, I'm, I'm usually pretty safe and responsible with my containers. Oh, something else to put out there? I, and I don't know, in one of the sections, either quality or value, you stick it wherever you want it to go. You watching, not me, I'm not doing it. It's gonna go right where it falls in the video. But I tend to have pretty sensitive skin. Like, I'm sure you could see when I came up close and was showing you my makeup job. I'm prone to acne. I have breakouts, not horribly frequently. That's why I don't eat a lot of dairy and I try to stay away from meats largely. I know I talk a lot on this channel about like vegan products and that's because I try to use and buy vegan any time that I can but I'm not strictly vegan I do still eat meat and use products that are not completely vegan just to throw that out there so you're not coming here thinking you're watching a strictly vegan reviewer my skin often does get breakouts though and I have to be a little bit careful in the makeup that I put on me I love Ofra's highlighters um, and I actually have a blush and a bronzer from them as well because I never have any skin reaction. My skin never breaks out after using their products. So that is something that gives this a major 5 out of 5 from me because not only is the formula amazing quality, is the value that I'm getting out of it, the longevity, really wonderful for me personally, but also my skin likes it. And isn't that like what we're all here trying to do, you know, please our skin? I'm sure at this point in the video everyone's just thinking, Jade, would you please shut up and put the highlighter on? That's what we're here for. Okay, so, oh my god, do you see that? That, though I really hope you can I hope you can see what I'm seeing I mean do you see that <laughs> Now just imagine this, okay? Imagine like this, all right? Are you with me? Imagine this, but on you who can probably do makeup better than I can. Can you just like see the world that you could create if you did this for yourself? You probably know what you're doing, you know? I'm giving you a lot of credit here because many of you watching could be just like me <laughs> using brushes that you said were good enough for this job. Look at that. But if you like knew what you were doing and how to like do your makeup well, this is knockout level. So if I was in full sun, this is even more blinding. My skin is glowing pretty. No one around to judge me. I can't see clearly without highlighter on. All the shimmer is making me kind of thirsty. And you don't have to stop there. Like, you can put this anywhere. I like putting it at the tip of my nose. I don't know if I'm supposed to. I think so. I'm pretty sure I watched that in a... 
a on a tutorial once i was like yeah put some on your nose it looks real cute you know that's probably not what they said and then i always like yeah like a little bit up here too i'm like why i don't know i don't know i think i saw it on a tutorial once you know and is that the right choice for me i don't really know because sometimes i do it and i'm like does my skin just look more oily now am i drawing attention to a problem area for me which is my whole forehead <laughs> I am transcending. <laughs> okay, but do you see what I mean about the brush situ sit situation? <laughs> situation that I get hung up on because like, sure, this is fun. Like this feels nice on my cheek. It's very light and gentle, but this, this is like, okay, we're doing something now. This person is clearly doing makeup, like no doubt about it. No one comes at their face with a brush like that and isn't here to say, hey, get ready with me. Let's go somewhere. Let's go get a drink in our own kitchen because I'm not going outside. I would be a hazard to traffic. This highlighter is so bright that I could like land an airplane with it. You know what I'm saying? Step away from the highlighter. You need to put it down. You've done enough here. People can clearly see what you're reviewing. Well, this is what I've done to my face and we're not finished with the video, so I hope all of you are chill with looking at this for the rest of the time. I cannot wait to watch this back in editing and just like marvel at my beauty recommendations so if the montage footage that hopefully i have put in here of me just layering this pillow talk highlighter onto my face wasn't enough to convince you let me just clarify yes i a hundred percent recommend especially if you're someone who's looking to kind of step up the quality and value of the makeup that they're usually wearing, and if you're also someone who has some guidelines that they purchase makeup by, such as vegan, cruelty-free, and good EWG scores, then even more so recommend. I will caution that if you're someone who doesn't like to glow in the dark, or frankly in broad daylight, that this is probably not the highlighter for you. There is no mistaking when it is on. Like, it is very apparent that you're wearing highlighter and it will give your skin this beautiful glow. And like I said, I went with Pillow Talk. Goes well, I think, with my everyday makeup without being like too flashy unless I get out of control and I just layer it on here. But Ofra has a very wide range of highlighters to choose from. They have all the way through like more golden sunsetty tones up through like pearlescence and pinks and I think there's even like a lavender hued one. I'm personally on the market and thinking about investing in a few more highlighters from Ofra. This is literally the only one that I have because I don't know much about how to do my makeup and so I keep it real simple for myself with one product in each category. You got one blush, one bronzer, one highlighter. I figure it's less hard, more easy for me to not mess my face up that way. But in particular, Nikki Tutorials, if you're familiar with her, has a collaboration with Ofra. She has some highlighters through them. I think they're still available. You would have to go research that. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm too weighed down by highlighter to go check for you, okay? Did I finish my thought about the Nikki Tutorials highlighters? Nikki Tutorials highlighter collab with Ofra seems to be a real crowd pleaser. I've seen those reviewed quite a bit and people love them. Glazed Donut is on my radar for purchasing. That one looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank all of you lovely humans for watching me talk about Ofra and apply highlighter to myself in just copious amounts. You know what? Why don't I just, why don't I film this outro and I'll just keep going, you know? Don't stop till you reflect the sun. Da -na. As always, I really appreciate you being here, watching this, the support. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviewing content. I will review you later. Bye! Okay, so I'm technically done with the video, you know, but I'm a little worried that I'm not gonna be able to stop.